In the next lecture, we'll know how to construct a computational graph and also have a feeling of when to use forward mode and when to use reverse mode automatic differentiation. In this lecture, we will cover forward mode automatic differentiation in detail. The forward mode automatic differentiation uses the chain rule to propagate the gradients. When you evaluate this composition of functions, you will evaluate the gx first. And in the forward mode, when you evaluate the gradients, you will evaluate the g prime x first. So that means you compute the gradients in the same order as function evaluation. In the last lecture, we see a very simple structure of the computational graph and describe how forward mode works. And this is what's actually uh, encountered in real simulation. You have a very complex computational graph. And uh, this is the neighborhood of a single load F. The first thing you do uh, is to aggregate all the gradients from upstreams. By upstreams, I mean the nodes that are evaluated first in the forward computation. And you can see it has three upstream nodes and the gradients, partial x, partial v. v is the primitive variables, and the partial y, partial v, and the partial z, partial v. And then it ag ag aggregates all the uh, gradients from uh, from those upstreams and then it forwards the gradients to downstreams and this is the chain rule by applying a chain rule you can uh, calculate the gradients that this node should forward to the downstreams so that's pretty abstract so we can do a simple example to illustrate this idea let's consider a specific way for computing this fx we first construct the computational graph as follows. Uh, yeah, I'll pause for a second so you can just match this expression and this computational graph. Okay, so for the first step is that you want to evaluate in the order of uh, forward evaluation. So I can just write a tuple. And the first component of a tuple is the uh, is actually the function values and the second component is actually the derivatives of the function values with respect to the primitive variable x and for this node it, it calculates x prime uh, x squared and then it also calculates the derivative which is uh, the, the derivative of x squared with respect to x with, which is 2x and also for this node you have sin x and the derivative is cos x the next step is to propagate the gradients to downstreams. And so we have for x3, it calculates the values, which is x1 squared, which is actually x to the fourth power. And you also have to compute the gradients of x3 prime. x3 prime is actually uh, x1 prime. x1 uh, is x1 squared uh, with the, the gradients of x1 squared with respect to x. And this is 2y1 and y1 prime and at this point you can evaluate these values based on those values and I just write it out but this is not this is actually what a symbolic differentiation would do it would expand this expression to 4x to the cube but in automatic differentiation because this y1 prime is already known it will plug in the values and evaluate this value directly so you also have y4 this is a similar because, uh, but for y4, it has two upstreams. So it will uh, do, the, uh, do, do the chain rule just the, like here. You, it will aggregate all the gradients from upstreams and then calculate the gradients that it should propagate to the downstreams. And then finally, you have y, uh, y4, uh, y5. So in summary, for the mode automatic differentiation reuses gradients from upstreams and it aggregates all the gradients from upstreams so that which makes it very efficient to fill too many mappings as we see in the next lecture. It has a lot of applications and the major applications for sensitivity analysis uh, in uncertainty qualification. For example, in those applications you only have a few physical parameters, but the output can be large, uh, that can be your observations. Uh, you you may collect uh, you may place a lot of sensors and uh, and what what you want to find out is that uh, what's your what's the sensitivity of of your observation with respect to the uh, physical parameter and if you expand this using uh, the 
using the 10 expansion oh here's a typo it, it should be fx here fx plus x prime x delta x so you want to compute this gradient so this gradient is actually a few too many mappings and uh, for the automatic differentiation is very useful for this case